Now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Today we are joined by Michael Mao, Becky Shaw, and Michael Daly. Michael Mao, please tell us a bit more about your current role and which programs you've completed. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Um, so professionally, my background has been pretty diverse, but rooted in SaaS finance over the past 15 years. Um, so the three courses that I took, uh, first one was advanced negotiation skills, um, which was a natural fit, of course, because in software sales, a lot of my focus is on the art of negotiation. And personally, I've always been fascinated by it. The second course I decided to, to dive into, which was kind of different and, and unusual for a software salesperson, is, is advanced design thinking. Um, that course gave me the ability and tools to help my customers think more creatively about how to use our software to advance their business goals. It also helps me shape the brainstorming and helps me prioritize what I want to demonstrate to our customers and really maximize the iterative process to engage stakeholders and ultimately build trust. And then the third course I took was uh, communication strategies presented with impact. I think communicating your message with poise, confidence, and conviction is essential whether you're in leadership or in any role in particular, like for myself in software sales. And so mastering your public speaking and presentation skills really helps you um, to inspire your audience as well as build trust and credibility. Thank you, Michael. It seems like you have a great uh, broad range of courses, you uh, programs you took with us. So thank you for that. Next, I'd like to introduce Becky Shaw. Becky, if you could tell us a bit more about yourself. Good morning. Thank you for having me. My name is Becky Shaw. I work for the Department of Defense in International Relations. And the courses I've taken with Harvard are Influence and Persuasion in Leadership and um, leading more effective teams. So both were phenomenal. Um, in fact, I think my coworkers might be a little sick of me talking about them. <laughs> I've talked about them so much since coming back. Um, but really, they were kind of a right place at the right time uh, moment for me. I wanted to take them for professional development. And then as I got through them, I realized I really am passionate about leadership and that's something I want to pursue more in my career. And they were kind of the catalyst for me to apply for um, graduate school. And I'm going to be pursuing a degree starting next year um, in leadership. So really kind of excited, very excited about these programs. Love the Harvard program. I'm happy to be here to talk. Thanks, Becky, and congratulations on starting your master's degree. Thank you. And lastly, uh, Michael Daly, if you could tell us a bit more about yourself and which programs you've taken. Hi, Jacqueline. Uh, yes, I am uh, currently, uh, my current role is for Principal External Affairs Liaison at Southwest Power Pool, which is a regional transmission organization. And just we think of that as like an air traffic controller for the power grid at a high level. And so really my work has really uh, evolved around education. Uh, my background prior to starting uh, at Southwest Power Pool was as a school teacher. And then, of course, um, I was educating our participants, market participants are about our market um, rules and obligations that they might have as a participant in the market. And then now I've really evolved into a role where I'm doing strategic initiative management, uh, taking parts of the strategic plan, making sure they're actually not something we just wrote on paper, but actually something they get implemented. And so my courses have included managing yourself and leading others, which has really prepared me uh, for a people leadership role in, in my career, which I, I found most helpful. Um, I've taken influence and persuasion and leadership because as I have worked to implement uh, strategic plans and uh, get uh, market participants to uh, ready and prepared uh, for new enhancements in the market, that has been helpful as well. Um, my last, my most recent courses are emotional intelligence and leadership and authentic leadership. And I thought those uh, really made uh, a difference in my ability to be more of a a genuine colleague uh, to my peers in the organization and to just be someone that could that could not only model good leadership skills, but certainly um, uh, prepare uh, for others uh, for also helping guide and mentor others with those skills as well. Thank you, Michael. And thank you to all for your introductions. I think we have a diverse range of professional development programs represented here today. Um, we'll now dive into the insightful questions you all pre-submitted and a reminder to please continue submitting your questions to the panel in the Q&A session. 
Uh, the first question will be for Michael Mao. And since we have two Michaels here, here today, I'll be addressing uh, the Michaels by their last name, just to let everyone know in case there's any confusion. So uh, Michael Mao, Mao, you told us about the programs you took. Could you tell us a bit more about the reasoning for why you chose them, uh, the process for looking through our page and figuring out which programs were best for you? Oh, Michael, I think you are on mute. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So as I said earlier, I think negotiation skill is a natural fit, whether you're in sales or not. So uh, I find that I do negotiation, not only in the professional world, but also in my day-to-day -day life. But the program ultimately helped me fine tune and improve my ability to structure and execute complex negotiations and contracts. So in my line of work, my sales cycle is very long. I typically work with the company for six to 12 months before we actually get to signing a contract. And during that time, we're dealing with multiple stakeholders from the CEO to the CMO to the CIO um, and you name it. And they all have um, different personalities, the way they negotiate. They care about certain things, although what they do care about as a collective team will roll up to their overall strategic objectives they all kind of have their own personal interest um, within the deal. So being able to um, negotiate and understand different personas, but also honing and fine tuning um, your negotiation um, skills, it's, it's super important because at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to negotiation, it, it's not a, a win, lose, lose, win. It's a win, win situation and how you continue to build that relationship. Because once they do sign the contract, let's say, 12 months from now, well, now you have them a customer and you want to keep them as a customer for life and be a strategic partner for them. Um, the reason why I took advanced design thinking was because ultimately when you're in these um, discovery calls and demos with executives and their, their, their leadership team, it's, it's about how we can help them solve for their strategic goals and priorities and how we fit into that. And so it's, it's always going to be about them, but at the end of the day, the gap is their process today. Something's missing. Something's not working. Something is a pain um, that's preventing them from getting to their strategic business goals. And being able to help them through an iterative process and showing them how our technology can get them there, that's, that's all about design thinking, right? So when we, when we think about design thinking, we may think, hey, it's, it's how, how, how do we use this internally as a team? Um, inside an organization, but I kind of flipped it on its head and used it in my sales cycle when I'm engaging stakeholders. Thank you. And that's super interesting to hear too, that you kind of took it and flipped it on its head and utilized it for a different feature um, in addition to what you originally kind of went in for. So thank you, Michael. Um, other Michael, if you could tell us a bit more about maybe one of the programs you took and your reasoning for choosing that particular uh, program. Um, I think the authentic leadership course, uh, the most recent course that I have taken was really important to me because you really can't lead others unless you know yourself well and you you understand uh, your own uh, your own faults, your own uh, your own strengths. And so I think that course was very helpful in helping analyze uh, one of the activities that we did was a, a life a, a timeline of our lives with peaks and valleys. And so one of that thing, one of the the, the enjoyable features of that activity was to help understand, okay, every time you've been in a valley, there was something that a catalyst that triggered another the, the journey toward another peak. And so I think that's really helpful in terms of the work that I'm doing as I'm working with people across North America and sometimes in other foreign countries um, to understand uh, what are their needs and help them understand how they're going to have to integrate with the rules and regulations that we have as part of our market and part of our RTO um, here in, in the south in the south of the United States. And so it's been very interesting to me to understand how to present myself authentically, um, even through moments of frustration um, and moments of joy um, in a way that is is perceived as being knowledgeable and understandable um, to a wide array of audiences. That's a powerful point you made about you can't lead others until you truly know yourself and you know your authentic yeah. self. And from other participants in, in that same program, we hear that point time and time again. So thank you mm -hmm. for that, Michael. And lastly, Becky, if you could tell us about 
uh, one of the programs you took and the reason for taking them. And also at the end, uh, if you could briefly talk about what led you to decide to take our Certificate of Leadership Excellence in Leading Teams. Sure. So I want to piggyback a little bit off of um, what Michael Daly just said and talking about like knowing yourself and um, and how that's so important in leadership. So one of the courses I've taken is Leading Effective Teams. And I'm an outgoing person. I'm an extrovert. I feel like I, I know who I am. But we did... Um, not a personality test, like not like Myers-Briggs or Enneagram or anything like that, but we did learning your communication style. And we did that before you came into the class. So then you came in knowing that. Um, and I think that the person who was teaching this was very smart and basically put us in small groups where there was one of each style at the table without us knowing. Um, so we worked in those small groups and then we worked in bigger groups with like, if we're all seekers or if we're all drivers or how that works um, and saying, yes, this is how we like to communicate. Yes. Like this group, like just give us the bottom line. We don't want to hear any of the reasons. We just want to know, you know, what the deadline is or things like that. Um, and I think that was really kind of pivotal for me in the sense of, I realized how much you communicate to other people the way you want to be communicated to. So yes, maybe I like to get to the point and, and not out loud process or, or any of that, but maybe your team is completely different. And so you need to be able as a leader, um, leading a small team, big team, doesn't matter. You need to be able to communicate in different ways. So everyone feels valued and feels seen and can understand what you're trying to get across without conflicts that really aren't necessary. Um, so that was really, really big for me in that class. I really enjoyed that. And then um, after I took influence and persuasion and leadership, I realized that uh, I think someone had suggested it. Is it came through a colleague saying, "Oh, this looks interesting." I signed up for it. It was a professional development course. Um, really liked it, and then realized there are different tracks that Harvard has. So this was one where it was um, in the leading effective teams, like certificate of leadership excellent program. And then I started looking at the other courses and I was like, well, this one sounds good. And this one sounds good. So that's what led me to taking leading more effective teams. And after that, I was like, oh, I'm getting the other two done because this was phenomenal. So um, yeah, just kind of a, a progression from there. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for talking a little bit more about your certificate of leadership excellence in leading teams. We also do have certificate of leadership excellence in management and certificate of leadership leadership excellence in strategy and innovation for senior leaders. So if you hear about any of these programs today, um, many of them also stack towards one of these certificates. And uh, we'll tell you more about that um, in the email that we send out to you all. And kind of on that same vein, um, I know a few of you briefly mentioned some of the activities you had in your programs. Um, Michael Daly, could you tell us about how an activity or a breakout session helped you make the material your own or helped you think about how you could apply your learnings to a particular situation in the real world? Yes, in the emotional intelligence and leadership course um, that Margaret Andrews was the instructor for, we did an activity at the a culminating activity at the end where we had to uh, do a almost a role play with another person in the room and, and giving feedback. And we really had to bring kind of you had to brainstorm, you know, what was a problem we were having with a particular employee or just a colleague. Maybe it's a direct report, maybe it's just a peer. Um, and we had to sort of model some of the strategies that she had um, introduced throughout the two-day course um, in that particular feedback session. And I was partnered with someone uh, from uh, Aruba. And in her instance, the thing that she was in a, in a finance or banking um, profession, and, and she had several direct reports, and one direct report was very, um, very demanding of her time. And so we sort of role-played a conversation that she could have with that direct report in a way to alleviate frustration and meet that employee's needs um, for, for, the, for the attention and feedback that, that that person needed. So it was very valuable. And then, of course, she we reciprocated, and she was able to give me some feedback as well on a, a situation I was dealing with. And so that app, that real world application made you understand you could leave there and take that directly to the workplace and apply it. It wasn't just some theory. It was real world practice. 
Awesome. And Becky, could you speak to another activity that maybe uh, left you feeling the same way, taking the theory that you were learning in your program and applying it to actuality, your, your current job role? Sure. So again, very similar to what Michael just said in the leading more um, or leading effective teams course, we were told to bring some kind of problem or issue um, of something that we were experiencing. And then in those small groups, like we said, it, there was time set aside to talk. And it wasn't even just one-on-one. -on -one. It was basically one person's talking and the other three are listening saying, well, this is an issue or um, I'm not really sure how to handle this. And I feel like by the time we got to that point in the course, everyone already had a better idea of how to handle it. So then it was kind of just talking out strategies of what they were going to do. So for instance, um, one of the guys in my group is in New York City and he was saying he is manages a small team, but they're all completely remote in different parts of the world. And so like there was an onboarding um, that he was going to have to do with someone in another country. And he wasn't really sure how to handle that because he hadn't done that before. And his communication style was something where he was the one where it's like, let's just go, go and get everything done. And so he was already talking through how he would adjust to that and how he could make sure that this person onboarding really felt part of the team um, and all of that. So it was, it was really interesting to see what we had discussed in just two days, because it's really only a normally a two day course and how we were already applying that into our relative roles. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Becky. And Michael Mao, um, was there an activity that you felt helped deepen the theory you were learning in class or you could immediately implement um, back when you got to your um, your role when the program concluded? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there a lot of our um, learning was through, you know, talking it through and, and understanding the concepts in theory, but also putting it into practice in these breakout sessions. So uh, one of the breakout sessions we have was a real life scenario to negotiate and um, there, there was a hidden challenge. There was always a curveball that the professor wouldn't tell you about. So in this simulation, uh, we dealt with the multi-party negotiation. Um, and what we discovered in the course of the, the, the simulation was that we had to be prepared to form coalitions, or at the end of the day, in the, in the, 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 the simulation, you'd be left out. So I, I didn't figure that out at the time. So I, I got left out and kind of had to climb my way back in. Um, but you know what I realized was the the role in that scenario was harder than it appeared. It was it was to really stay in the deal, right? Um, to to really compromise, but also stay firm in what you're asking for and, and make sure you don't get knocked out. But I learned in that scenario that the goal is to not always win at each other's expense. Sometimes the goal is to shift from being competitive to being cooperative. And the lesson was about how to create value. Uh, for everyone in the negotiation, instead of just focusing on winning. And that's so important in the, in, the, in the world of software sales, particularly where our goal is to both create value for all the stakeholders involved, but also building long-term relationships with customers for, for years to come, not just that single um, negotiation or deal. Awesome. Thank you. And it seems like for all three of you, even though some of these programs may have been a year or two ago, these activities are still poignant in your mind. So I think that speaks to um, their power and their influence on, you know, your role and your learnings from these programs. So thank you for that. Um, so one theme I heard across um, both uh, Becky's and Michael Daly's uh, responses was about people with varied backgrounds. And so I was wondering if, um, Becky, you could speak to the different backgrounds, both globally and in terms of industry, that you had in some of your prog some of your programs. Definitely. Um, so again, I work for the Department of Defense. Um, so working for the government is, I think, completely different than any other industry. There's certain ways we do things, certain you know, just like with any company or industry. So um, sometimes I'm so used to that that it really was eye opening just seeing where everyone was coming from in the class. So. Um, in influence and persuasion and leadership, we definitely had several international participants. Um, and then same in the leading more effective teams. We had international participants. We had people who worked for Amazon. We had people who were coming from Google. We had people coming from small um, like design firms. So in 
completely different stages of their careers, but also in what they were doing, but still managed to come together and all take something from this class about how we are, how we can be on a team, how we can lead, um, and just really interesting to get those kinds of perspectives because I don't necessarily get that day to day um, with other colleagues. I They have different experiences, but not the ones of working for all of these different kinds of companies. So that was really interesting. Perfect. Thank you. And Michael Mao, did you have a similar experience? Um, I know you were online. Did you have people from different industries, different stages in their career, different places from around the world? Was that something you also noticed? Yeah, that was that was um, something I noticed. And that's something I actually really value because I have the opportunity to practice um, negotiation strategies with people from many different industries um, and, and very different, various different roles, including senior leaders. You know, for example, I think at one simulation, I was negotiating with the Secretary of Finance um, from another country. So that was really interesting. And it, it allowed me to, to kind of break through my, my shell of, of, you know, just negotiating with the same persona, with someone from a different background and culture and understanding, you know, verbal and nonverbal cues that was going on. So that, that was super valuable. And that was, that was consistent ac across all three courses that I took from advanced design thinking to communication. Um, strategies. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. And Michael Daly, um, did you also experience this? And how did it add value to your professional development programs, having this uh, diverse array of participants in uh, your program with you? Yes, we certainly had um, all kinds of uh, nationalities and countries represented in every course I've been in. Um, I remember very vividly in the Managing Yourself and Leading Others course, we had a gentleman who worked for Visa and he was from Qatar. And he talked about how uh, Visa's goal was to make it a cashless society and that they owned so much of the payment market. And, you know, that's that was their comp their corporate you know strategy. So it's certainly valuable. Um, and at the same my most recent course in authentic leadership, there were several um, from South America, and their experiences were invaluable. Uh, they were from medicine, um, certainly finance, um, and engineering. And the, the the value that they brought in not only the activities, but also the understanding of different cultures and perspectives and what would be considered authentic in one culture, but perhaps inauthentic in another, was certainly valuable in understanding uh, uh, the, the the concepts from the course. Fantastic. And yeah, one thing I'm hearing from all of you is this attention to cross-cultural sensitivity and learning methodology to kind of um, incorporate that into your thinking about, you know, talking with people, communicating, negotiating, um, and also having the opportunity to role play and speak with people outside your industry, which you might not have the ability to do on the day-to-day -day basis. So that's fantastic to hear. And kind of in the same vein, um, after you left your PDP, did you stay in contact with any of your peers, um, whether that was through LinkedIn or connecting in another way, or did you follow up with the instructor at all? Um, if if any of you did, would you um, uh, like to share that with us? Maybe uh, Michael Mao, if that was something you did. Yeah, definitely. I, I stayed in touch with both my professors um, for advanced design thinking because I was the only uh, student in that course that... Um, had a, that, that was in sales. And uh, they had to pivot their 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 course to really incorporate design thinking. And the light bulb moment was like, wow, like advanced design thinking is so applicable um, into software sales and, and and part of the sales cycle. And I remember my professor even created a two-page document of like how he thought about applying it. Um, and, and it was great. And, and, the, and how we got there was, I, I think it's fair, you know, you get out of the program what you put into it. So be interactive. So the more curious you are, the more questions you ask, the more information you're, you're gonna get from it. Um, and so the professors in that course really helped tailor that course to really bring my scenarios to real life. The challenges I was having in discovery calls with executives, the demonstration and making sure that they stick and making sure that it's an iterative process. And so um, we still connect today. We're connected on LinkedIn. Um, we're still liking each other's post. Um, we're staying in touch and, and we're kind of just, you know, watching each other's kind of careers and journeys progress. Thank you. And Michael Daly, did you um, have a similar experience staying connected with your instructor, or maybe uh, fellow peers from your programs? Yes, I certainly um, have had that experience as well. Uh, 
some through LinkedIn and some through other social media platforms uh, where we've been able to share our career journeys. I also had an interesting uh, experience that kind of builds on something Michael just mentioned is, you know, you get more out of it. Uh, you, you get out of it what you put into it. And uh, our instructor in the authentic uh, leadership course, um, Julie, um, was so uh, extraordinary. And I stayed after the first um, day to ask several questions related to my career development and some some goals that I've had. And she was just profoundly knowledgeable and she has a coaching background too. And so it was just very interesting to learn extra strategies and, and thoughts from her that weren't necessarily built into the course, but certainly added value to my experience as a result of the course. Fantastic. And, and lastly, Becky, um, did you have a similar experience? Um, yeah, so I have stayed in touch with a few of my peers from a couple of the courses. Um, there were a few people who we just really kind of clicked when we were there and ended up just exchanging phone numbers and occasionally we'll still text. And then I do remember too talking to um, the professor after one of the courses and saying, um, I would say, well, I'll take any course you take because this was fantastic. And um, and then she jokingly said, well, I teach one about being an introvert, that might not be for you. So, um, but th then she actually went on to say, I, I think it's like leading as an introvert is the, um, is the course. And she actually said that, uh, people have taken it who are not introverts to learn how to manage others who are on their teams. And so like, even just that kind of that little nugget, um, was just really interesting. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. And I it, that reminds me kind of of what Michael Mao said a couple answers back about how so you can sometimes take the material and flip it to maybe a different context or scenario that works best for you. So that's great to hear. And we hear from so many participants that the instructors are really what makes the experience. They want to connect with you. They want to share their experience with you. And they want you to walk away knowing everything you can on the subject. And we also hear, and I've been in a couple of our professional development programs as well, that people love to stay in touch after. We have networking sessions built into the program. When you do these breakout activities, it's a great way to you know, network with other people. So when you do these professional development programs, it's not just you know gaining the, the tactical information from the program. It's also gaining a network of, of peers who are interested in you know, progressing their career. So it's great to hear that all three of you had that experience. Um, and in Michael Mao in particular, I know that you mentioned you did an on like all the courses you did, uh, all the programs you did were online. Uh, do you have any strategies that helped you make uh, the online option the most effective for you? I know you said that it's all about um, you get out what you put in. How did you maximize your online experience with these programs? Yeah. So, so first off. Um... My advice is if, if you're thinking about doing this a professional development course, if you want to do it, just, just do it now. So for me, you know, I've, I've always wanted to continue to develop professionally and my employers always had courses that can help you level up, but it's, it's just different when you, you kind of take your professional development and, and run with it. So making excuses for, for why you shouldn't do it is you're just going to prolong it indefinitely. So for me, when I took these courses, online really helped because it allowed me to be flexible with my work schedule. So it, it was a very challenging year for me. Um, I was going through a career change. I just got married. We were anticipating our, our first uh, son. So our hands were really full. Plus, I was managing a, a full-time career, but I was able to take the courses um, during the day before I actually started my customer meetings. Um, one strategy is you're going to get so much thrown at you. So really immerse yourself in, in it. Take notes on kind of key key themes. And then don't be afraid to reach out to your professors afterwards to, to have them clarify something that you may not have understood. But the most important thing is to review your notes at the end of the day. Once you're done with what you have to do, whether it's work, or, you know, whatever it is on, on your plate, reviewing your notes and being prepared for the next, you know, the next day simulation or topic. Um, that for me kind of helped me compartmentalize what I was learning, but also apply it um, in my work. I, I literally took concepts that I've learned and then applied it next day in my discovery call or my demonstration with customers. And I think when you do that, that that's going to bring it to life versus just you know keep it just just taking notes just for the sake of taking notes. That's great to hear that. Even though you were online, you still had this um, insightful, powerful experience, and I think that's what we aim to do here is 
have our professional development programs fit into your life, whether that's, you know, two days coming on campus or doing it online so that you can continue to balance your other commitments. And it can really be an addition to everything you have going on instead of kind of getting in the way of that. So thank you for sharing about that, Michael. Um, and, and Becky, so I know that most of the programs you did were on campus. Um, how would you say you either went into these programs or while you were there, um, incorporated some strategies to best maximize your time at the, the professional development program or to take the most out of it? Um, well, the first one, the influence and persuasion leadership that I took, I came in not really knowing what to expect. And I would probably say within like an hour of being in the course, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get way more out of this than I anticipated. This is fantastic. Um, so it's really, I think my goal was to, um, this sounds kind of small, but really like to put like the phone that I have my work email on away so I could be present and be absorbing and taking notes and fully participating because you get breaks if you really need to check your email you can look then and, and um I think that for me was the most effective so then at the end of the day um for the first course I took it with one of my colleagues and so we were kind of having a discussion and kind of processing what we had learned and how this would apply here and we think this would apply there and oh that makes a lot of sense and because we talked a lot in that first course about um body language and how to like read people and how presenting yourself better. Um, and, and again, just little things that you wouldn't expect to think, oh, that can make a big difference. Um, so I would say both times on campus, um, but really just trying to be fully present and making sure that I didn't have a problem with this. I felt like as soon as people started talking about things, I was automatically thinking how that would apply at work and how this would be helpful or like, oh, I could, you know, approach it this way with a team member. So um, I think then just trying to think of ways that you can take that back with you to your career. Awesome. Thank you. And, and Michael Daly, um, you also did some programs on campus. How did you approach these uh, professional development programs to best maximize the learnings you gathered from it and um, applying them to your, your role? Um, to echo something Becky said, just to be fully present, um, to put away the phone, uh, visit with people, communicate. Um, you know, I've been fortunate in the ones that uh, the last, the mo two most recent courses in emotional intelligence and authentic leadership. Those were people that were decidedly very in touch with their emotions and and very much. Um, very much in the mindset of uh, sort of the Brene Brown sort of uh, uh, mindset of, you know, having the right vocabulary to talk about your emotions and 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 being very open about that. So I think that was one, uh, just to be present and to be mindful of those experiences. I think another was to really extrapolate from the reading. So there was a lot of sometimes pre-activities and course readings that were so valuable and generated such discussion that continued even after uh, the time they were discussed in the course um, that that um, offered so many takeaways uh, that provided value. In the most recent course I took in Authentic Leadership, we were able to do a Clifton Strengths Finder assessment, um, which has been, you know, very insightful about the, you know, it takes for 34 traits. And so very insightful about the different strengths that I have as a person that influence the way that I lead others. And so, and and really that's mostly through project leadership, not necessarily having direct reports under me at this, at this stage of my career. Thank you, Michael. And um, Becky, I know that you mentioned that you had another colleague with you at one of your uh, programs. I was wondering if you could speak a bit more to the actual experience of being on Harvard's campus. Um, if you attended the networking hour at the end, if you were here during um, non-COVID times um, and how that elevated your experience in addition to time in the classroom. Sure. Um, I thought it was fantastic. Um, it was, I mean, you, you know the name Harvard. It's you know, Ivy League, it's known for all of these things. So it was very cool to be able to come to the campus um, and then just, oh yeah, I'm just at Harvard for a couple of days. Um, I definitely did the networking session. It's at the end of the first day for both of the courses I did. Um, and really that was just kind of going outside of the classroom. There's um, food there and it just gives you more time to kind of get to know the people in your class and ju just chat about anything, right? You kind of you know, with anything in a new situation, it's maybe you start talking about the course, and then it's like, oh, wait, what do you do? And and how are you doing this? And so that's really where um, some of those connections were made. So after 
um, the first course, Influence and Persuasion, after that first day, when the networking session was over, my colleague and I went to dinner with two of the people we had met that day and just like kept talking and talking and um, had a great conversation. And those are the people who I'm still in touch with to this day. Um, so, and I thought that they laid out the courses very well. You know what the agenda is going to be when you're there. Um, there's time built in for extra, you know, discussions and breaks and all of this. So I thought being on campus was really interesting. I think one of the courses I'm looking at taking again is online. So it's great to hear Michael's experience about that as well. Um, but would highly recommend coming to campus if you can. Fantastic. And Michael Daly, did you have a similar experience uh, taking some of your programs on campus? I did. I, I had the experience of both uh, before the pandemic and after the pandemic on, on campus and certainly can allude to the fact that the networking was a key part of that. I actually ended up meeting someone in the course I took on emotional intelligence that actually is in a similar industry as me. And so it was great to meet, uh, you know, a peer colleague that can understand some questions I'm having on this side of the business, whereas he is coming from a different side and, and be able to, to navigate those learning experiences um, in our careers. Thank you. And switching gears a little bit, um, one of our participants today wanted to know, do you have any strategies for how to ensure you take what you learned in the course and bring it back so you can apply it at the office? Um, Michael Mao, I know that you said at the end of each day of your online program, you took some notes. Do you have any additional strategies you implemented to make sure you were taking what you were learning and both in short term and long term, bringing it back into your, your role? Yeah, I think that's, that's a great question because you're getting so much content and new content too that's thrown at you that it might feel overwhelming, but it's important to also tell yourself, hey, I'm going to be very mindful and conscious about taking this particular topic or strategy and I'm going to apply it to this you know, task at hand at work. And so for me, for example, I had a big um, demonstration coming up for you know a deal that was that was pushing six figures, um, I'm I'm sorry seven figures, and so I I took some of the strategies and what I've learned in those courses and I applied it into those slides and I brought it to life in the customer meeting because really you know it, you know what do you have to lose if you don't try it right then then you're you're just gonna kind of be stuck in your own ways doing the same thing over and over again but really taking the concepts and and not being afraid to apply it. But also, you know, maybe practicing with your coworkers beforehand. Hey, here's what I've learned. What do you think about me doing X, Y, and Z in this next meeting or applying this concept or this strategy, right? Bounce it off your peers before you actually execute on it. Um, and, and, I, and I think it's, you know, that's the perfect way to learn because then it, it, it becomes immersed um, in your day-to-day -day work where you're actually applying these concepts just in practice versus just thinking about it in theory and not actually using it. Fantastic. I, I think those are some great um, active learning examples that um, all of our participants, whether they take our PDP or not, uh, are some great um, tips to utilize. Michael Daly, did you um, utilize similar strategies or anything else you'd like to add to um, demonstrate how you took all the learnings from the course and made sure that they applied um, both in the short term and the long term? Yes, uh, certainly. As a part of a pre my employer is part of our uh, pr professional development experience. We are required to come back and do a presentation about what we have done and share some things. So that's that's part of a requirement of what we do. Now, where the where the added value to that has been is actually doing some of the case studies um, and talking through some of the same issues we brought up in the class and how that using some of the pre readings right really from the course to connect the concepts from the class to my other teammates to help them understand, oh, okay, and, and to sort of bridge uh, bridge that experience and help it be enlightening for others, uh, even if they weren't able to attend in person. Awesome, thank you for that, Michael. And Becky, a slightly different question for you. Were there any skills in either of your programs that you didn't anticipate learning, but were a pleasant surprise, uh, whether they were directly related to the program at hand or maybe some more soft skill communication skills? Um, you learn from your programs. I know cultural sensitivity has been tossed around, but anything else you think? Um, yeah, I was I was thinking about this a minute ago, um, and it was um, 
in the influence and persuasion course is again we talked a lot about you know body language and presentation and and how you seem to other people and it was i guess not surprising to me but kind of gave me a moment of pause when we really like talked about how much group think can come into play in the workplace even even in teams that are small or even in teams that um have been together for a long time and there was um an example that um, Nick, the professor, gave is he was giving a speech and uh, he had kind of been running late and he was saying something and, and and someone ended up like interrupting him at the beginning and how, um, and then he's like, well, let me stop there. How is everyone reacting to that? Like, what would you have done type of a thing? And what he ended up doing is kind of using his body language, like going over to that person and saying like, oh, wow, that, that would really bother me too. Like, what do you guys think? Isn't that, so like kind of putting that person on his side versus making it an initial like antagonistic type of thing. Um, and just again, kind of what um, Michael Mao had said about flipping some of the things like on their head. So like you think, okay, this is going to be sort of awkward as he navigates this in public speaking, but he completely turned it into something else. And just kind of remembering that's an option and then how you can apply that within your day-to-day -day life. So just even using body language to achieve that. So th that's something really memorable that stuck out to me. That's awesome. Thank you, Becky. And Michael Mao, um, our instructors are unique from executive programs in that they have substantial industry and business experience um, to complement their academic backgrounds. Can you describe an unexpected or memorable lesson that you learned from any of your PDP instructors and how it has influenced your perspective or approach on your work? Yeah, so just, just kind of drawing back to um, design thinking. Um, when you think of design thinking and when I rolled in the course, I thought about, hey, how do you use it internally to help your teams be more creative? So for me, my professional development goals are to continue broadening my skills um, in all different areas, right? And that's what also keeps me coming back to Harvard PDP. And so in this course, being the only salesperson, I, I was concerned that, you know, I may not belong, that the connection is just too tenuous, right? My, my role in, in this course, well, like I said, it ended up being a, a truly uh, amazing experience because it was really relevant. Um, and I think at the end of the day, if I had to sum up, you know, how does this help my day-to-day -day work in, in, in my line of work as a regional sales director at Kiva is, is design thinking taught me how to guide potential customers and existing customers of ours as they think through and respond to their unique business, business challenges in more innovative, innovative ways, right? A lot of times people are used to doing things status quo and that can cause a lot of pain but it's your goal to help them uncover that pain and advance towards their business goals with your software. Um, and design thinking is kind of hits that right on the head. Thank you, Michael. We just have a few more questions for our panelists today. Uh, so Michael Daly, um, you've taken multiple programs with us, as you mentioned, both before and after the pandemic. Can you share what keeps you coming back to Harvard Professional Development? I think Harvard Professional Development is offering something truly unique in the marketplace, um, particularly when it comes to uh, in, in the professional development courses that I have attended, there is a strong thread of uh, know thyself. And I think that any true leader that's effective across an organization knows their strengths and their weaknesses, and they know how to get the support, the support that they need, uh, whether that is mentorship, whether that is, uh, you know, coaching, whatever, whatever it may be. And I find that to be a very powerful um, thing for me personally, because I want to truly understand uh, all the things that make me the way that I am so that I can be more authentic and more engaging with the people um, that I have to work with in, in, in my in my business and and certainly maintain a healthy relationship um, across uh, both inside and outside the organization. I think that's just an, an important skill in the 21st century because we're seeing that, in, you know, we live in a 30-second soundbite world, sometimes even smaller than that. Um, first impressions matter. Uh, authenticity matters now um, if you're going to be successful. 
it's a great point that I've never thought of before that across all of our programs, which, you know, vary in their topic matter, I think knowing yourself at your core is essential to all of them. So that's a, that's a fantastic point, Michael. And other Michael, what keeps you coming back to our Harvard professional development programs? Uh, my desire to continue broadening my skill set. And it, it's, it's interesting because hearing Michael Daly and Becky speak about the courses they have took, and I'm on here just looking like, oh, I want to take this next, right? So my goal, my long-term goal is eventually move into transition to leadership, um, um, being a leader of leaders, right? And so there's courses that are about emotional intelligence, authentic leadership. Um, uh, there's one that's, you know, essential management skills for emerging leaders. There's, I mean, the, the, the list goes on. And for me, the favorite thing is being able to pick these courses that are relevant to where I am in my career. Um, and so it's kind of like a buffet, right? I, 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 I get to eat what I want to eat that's most relevant to me right now and focus on the skills and areas that I want to hone right now because this is where I am in my career journey. Um, and I think all the courses I've taken so far, I've taken courses at other uh, programs before, these courses are really relevant. Um, and I, it's, it's never disappointed me. So that's what's keeping me coming back. Um, and also you know, I'm raving about these courses to my wife, who's also in leadership. Um, and she, that's, you know, she's planning to take some courses herself. So um, yeah, continue to broaden my skill set and, and find that it's been super relevant um, in my career journey. Awesome. I love that analogy of a buffet um, and that you're coming back again. So great to hear that. And uh, finally, Becky, what keeps you coming back to Harvard professional development? So I would 100% agree with what both Michaels have said. Um, and I also like the analogy of the buffet coming back for seconds and thirds. Um, but really, I've taken something different from each of the courses that I've um, finished so far. So I know that no matter what course I take next, I'm going to gain something else out of it. I feel like already the courses have helped me slow down a little bit and think about how I'm presenting information, who I'm presenting it to, how to best communicate all of that information, which is only going to help even if, whether it's like a, speeding up a meeting because I'm more clear on something or whether it's just helping a long-term strategic goal. So I think that they've made me uh, more mindful. I feel like they've made me a better listener. Still working on that a little bit. But um, in general, I just, I'm going to get something different out of each one. So I will absolutely continue to come back and take them. Well, it's superb to hear from all of you that it's had such an immense impact and you're anticipating coming back for more. We love to hear that. Uh, so our last question for the panel today is, would you recommend a Harvard professional development program to someone considering it? And why would you recommend? Uh, so Michael, now I will start with you. That's a tough question. Um, emphatically, yes. Um, because like I said, you know, depending on the organization you're at or, or, or depending on where you're at in your career journey, your companies may be offering courses in-house. For example, mine does. But the type of education, interaction um, that you get out of these courses at Harvard PDB, it's, it's different. It's like night and day, right? And I think it can really augment or supplement what, what you're currently doing um, right now. And, and, and not only that, the, the course catalog is, is, is pretty broad. So like I said earlier, you know, having the courses be really relevant to where you are in your journey today, you can, you can browse through the courses and, and depending on where you're at, there's, there's got a guarantee there's going to be a course that's going to be relevant, that's going to help you level up, give you the confidence, give you the opportunity to hone in on your skills. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Becky, um, is there anything you'd like to say to someone considering a Harvard professional development program? Just do it. Honestly, <laughs> um, I have not regretted any of it. It's been an incredible experience. Again, you're going to take more out of it probably in different ways than you expect. Um, and like someone said earlier, you get out what you put in. So go, whether it's online or in person, just be present, absorb the information. And I think that they're fantastic. Thank you, Becky. And, and lastly, Michael Daly, um, anything you'd like to add to the discussion about why Harvard Professional Development? It doesn't matter where you are in your career. 
The journey of self-discovery is a lifelong pursuit, and these courses help you understand who you are at a deeper level and how you can be uh, a better coworker, a better person, no matter what, no matter if you're desiring, desiring people leadership or content leadership. I mean, it doesn't really matter what your career goal will be. You'll find something that fits you and that serves you well for life, not just for a career. I couldn't have said it better myself, Michael. Thank you. Well, thank you again to Michael, Michael, and Becky for your insights. And thank you to you all for your thoughtful questions. I'm going to share some information now. So thank you all again so much for joining us today. If you have any questions or would like help finding the right program for you, as we mentioned, we have a broad list of um, offerings. Please email us at pdp at dce.harvard.edu or call us at 617-998-8500. Make sure to also follow us on social media channels uh, using the QR code on your screen. We offer some great tips on there, some uh, participant testimonials, upcoming events, so definitely give us a follow. And stay tuned for the webinar recording in your email or on the Harvard Professional Development YouTube channel. Thank you all again so much for coming today and for um, hearing from our participants what makes Harvard Professional Development so special, and we hope to see you in one of our programs soon.